Hey everybody, it's Derek Clemartin from CodeOpinion.com. Cache invalidation is often said to be a hard problem to solve. Personally, I disagree in the context of software systems. Let me explain and illustrate how if you define strict boundaries and understand your caching strategy, cache invalidation doesn't need to be difficult. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. There's two common caching strategies. I'm gonna explain them both and how they deal with invalidation, but why boundaries are so important for both. So the first strategy is called the write-through. And the way this works is that we have our client application make a request to our application or service. And when it needs to do some type of state transition, persist something to our database, regardless of what type of database it is, that request occurs. But then immediately after we're done that request, we then go and update our cache. So this could be updating an existing entry or it could be adding something new. But the idea here is that immediately after we write our state to our primary database, we then go and update the cache. Boundaries are really important here because we've defined in our app service, it understands that if we make a state change to our database, that it's gonna update the cache with that write through uh, strategy. So that means that every client needs to act the same way. Another service can't just go and access our database within our other service. This can't happen. This is our defined boundary where we have our service, our database, our cache. This is all within a kind of a walled garden. We defined the API and what we're exposing within our app service. So another service has to behave as any other client. They're all just clients and how they access and interact with our service is what we define. So it can't just go and reach out to our database. It has to use the APIs we're exposing. Now the same rule applies even within your own boundary. Meaning if you're working on some issue or there's some bug and you have some data that's maybe incorrect in some way because of an issue, if you just go into and access your database directly and say you change some state or write some update statement, well, you've not done it through the API because then your API is not gonna do the write through if you change that data directly. So again, even internally, you have to do everything via the APIs. Now, if you're thinking about a monolith and you're not thinking about separate services that are deployed independently, this still concept applies to defining boundaries even within your monolith. So let's say I have a monolith that's a single process, that's a single overall uh, solution, but I have different boundaries that may be using a single database instance, but within that instance, each boundary has its own schema that it owns. So each boundary has its own schema. So the same applies. You can't go have one boundary reach out and access the same schema, even though it, it physically has access to it potentially, is that you need to define these boundaries so that each boundary owns its own schema, owns its own caching strategy, and again, between boundaries, you're accessing everything via the APIs that you're exposing. So what I'm talking here is about defining boundaries, logical boundaries. They don't necessarily need to be physical ones. So a logical boundary has data ownership and it has a set of business capabilities that it provides. And again, behind that is the data, but that's the boundary you're defining and how you interact between boundaries needs to be well-established too. So if you're gonna employ the right through cash strategy, this means that you're really not invalidating, but rather you're keeping your cache up to date all the time. And to do that, you wanna create a single narrowed focused place where all those state changes to your database are happening. So that place knows that when it makes state changes to your database, it's going to update the cache. So the second caching strategy is called the cache aside or lazy loading. The way this works is that we have our client make our call to our app or service, but the first thing we're gonna go do is check to see if that data is actually in the cache. So we make our request to the cache. If the data is not there and we have a cache miss, what we'll do is we'll go to out, reach out to the database, get the data we need, and then add it to the cache. So the issue here is that we're adding data if it doesn't exist, but we're never updating it. Sure, when we add something to the cache, we could add some time to live or some expiry so they could go through this cycle. But if we want to keep it up to date, how do we invalidate the cache to remove it or to update it? So a solution to this is to leverage events, a venture architecture, and a message broker. So the way this works is that we have our client, it makes a request to our app or service. And again, similar to the cache aside, is that we need a focused API, something to find that we know when we're making state changes. Because when we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create an event that we're going to publish 
to our message broker. So our app service here can be a, a publisher as well as a consumer. So what that means is that when we publish this uh, message to our message broker, we can also be listening for the various types of events. Now these could be things like if they're CRUD in nature, maybe we're just kind of doing a product was updated event or a product was added event, but they could as well as be very focused narrow that are driven by a task-based UI. So they may be something like uh, inventory was adjusted or product was shipped or product was received. So something in that nature. So it doesn't really necessarily uh, concern what the type of events are, just that we're publishing them and as well as we're gonna consume them. So that means that our app service at this point separately, asynchronously can then get that message, process it and then update our cache. So we can have this done asynchronously and not necessarily have to worry about when we make a state change that we need to invalidate the cache we just simply publish an event and have a separate consumer invalidate the cache or update it for us. So if you're using the cache aside lazy loading method and invalidating or updating with events, you still need to define strict boundaries. That means that you cannot have another service reach out to your database directly. It can't happen. It has to reach out like any other client and go through your API because it is understanding that when it updates data, it's publishing events. And there are consumers for those events that are gonna invalidate or update the cache. Can invalidating the cache be a difficult problem? Absolutely. If you have different processes or systems integrating at the database level because they're all interacting with the same data and all updating it, then absolutely, this could be a nightmare. However, if you define strict boundaries, logical boundaries, and make all the integrations happen at that API level that you define, you can manage how you update your cache because no other rogue processes are just randomly changing data behind the scenes for data that a logical boundary owns. So again, define strict boundaries and this becomes less of a difficult problem. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.